It's Tuesday, July 7th. I'm Lucy Steiner. And I'm Sam Cedar. Which of these stories will you be talking about today? Donald Trump passed down one of his most spiteful and pointless immigration orders yet, ruling that students in the U.S. whose universities were switching to online classes would have to return to their home countries until their schools resumed in-person learning. Meanwhile, another pipeline bites the dust. A district court ordered that the Dakota Access Pipeline, which was fought for years by indigenous activists, must be shut down and emptied of oil by August 5th, pending a fresh environmental review. And lastly, new data that the New York Times had to sue the government to get shows the horrifying racial inequality in the coronavirus pandemic. And all the while, states are still struggling to perform adequate testing. You are listening to Majority FM's AM Quickie, and these are the stories you need to know. The Trump administration added yet another ridiculous, destructive immigration policy to its long list on Monday. The policy was a subtle one that flew under the radar and a lot of major media coverage, but it's going to have a profound effect on thousands of students across the country. On Monday, Immigration and Customs Enforcement announced that it would no longer honor visa for immigrant students whose immigrants are only offering online classes in the fall semester. ICE says that those students either have to go back to their home country and take online classes or transfer to a university that offers in-person classes. For students who have physically moved to a new city or country to study, this is clearly a ridiculous proposition. It's ICE literally turfing students out of their homes and saying that because their classes are online, they have no reason to be in the country. If students don't comply, ICE's announcement threatened to start deportation proceedings. This is obviously going to cause havoc on universities, particularly research institutions, which a large number of foreign students who contribute to laboratories that have already been disrupted by the coronavirus. It also serves no practical purpose. Kicking out students who have already been here isn't going to make our already out of control domestic pandemic any better. It's just pure vindictive spite from the Trump administration on a level that we should expect by now, but that isn't any easier to swallow. It's only Tuesday, and it's already been a massive week for environmental and indigenous activists fighting the big oil and gas companies trying to skewer their lands with destructive pipelines. On Sunday, two energy giants canceled the Atlantic Coast Pipeline, and on Monday, a district court struck a massive blow against the Dakota Access Pipeline. The Dakota victory is huge. Here's how it went down. A D.C. district court essentially struck down a prior federal permit that allowed the pipeline to continue flowing while the Army Corps of Engineers did an extensive environmental review. The new ruling is that the pipeline has to shut down and drain itself of oil by August 5th, following early court decisions that said the government hadn't done its due diligence in figuring out how destructive the pipeline would be. For the indigenous activists who put their bodies on the line for years at Standing Rock, this is a much-needed reprieve. The Texas energy company that owns the pipeline said it would file a motion to stay the decision and keep the oil flowing, and potentially appeal the case to a higher court. But even further up in the courts, activists can't stop winning. In another huge decision yesterday, the Supreme Court rejected the Trump administration's request to go ahead with construction on parts of the Keystone XL pipeline that had been blocked by a federal judge in Montana. The Keystone pipeline got held up when a federal judge deemed that the government had violated violated the Endangered Species Act. It's pretty clear that these pipelines wreak havoc on the land as they go through, but it's also clear that oil companies are willing to spill as much blood and oil as they need to to get their payday. But if activists keep winning the battles in court, there may be some way to stop them. Hey, Majority.fm's AM Quickie is fueled by JustCoffee.coop. Just Coffee is a worker-owned coffee roaster based in Madison, Wisconsin, that has sponsored the Majority Report for nearly a decade. Check out their collection of fair trade roasts, including our own Majority Report blend. And regardless of what you order, receive 10% off of your order when you use the code MAJORITY at checkout. All shipping, of course, is free. That's coupon code MAJORITY at JustCoffee.coop. We've known for some time that the coronavirus pandemic was hitting some communities harder than others. But for months, the largest and most important source of data was absent. The CDC has been tight-lipped about their data, so quiet, in fact, that it took a lawsuit for them to cough it up. The New York Times sued the CDC for a full accounting of the pandemic, and the data they got back shows that Black and Latino people have been disproportionately ravaged by the disease, despite their location in the country or age groups. In other words, it's not about urban versus rural. The disease is hitting communities that are already underserved by healthcare systems, impoverished and otherwise isolated from the care and resources they need. In America's racist system, these communities are black and brown. According to the Times, federal data shows that black and Latino Americans are three times as likely to get the disease as white people. All of this comes as testing remains a struggle in many metropolitan areas. The fresh wave of cases across the country has left even increased testing resources stretched thin, and it doesn't show any signs of letting up. 
Texas topped 200,000 cases just 17 days after topping 100,000 cases. Many other places in the country don't look much better. Unless we get realistic about who's being hurt by this disease and what we have to do to help them, the country is resigning itself to thousands upon thousands more deaths. Quicker quickie. New data shows that while most of the government's small business loans went to restaurants and car dealerships, President Trump's personal lawyer and multiple high-profile lobbying firms also all took a cut of the federal pie. The Supreme Court ruled that states can abolish faithless electors or electoral college voters who decide not to cast their ballots for the candidate their state selects. A better system would be abolishing the whole electoral college, but sure, we're getting there. Melbourne, Australia's second largest city, declared a second six-week lockdown on Tuesday, citing, quote, unsustainably high numbers of new cases of coronavirus. The city had previously started to reopen, only to see cases start to skyrocket again. And their outbreak was nowhere near as bad as the one here, for the record. Brazil's president, Jair Bolsonaro, is once again displaying symptoms of coronavirus and was tested for the disease on Monday. He presided over one of the worst outbreaks anywhere in the world outside of the U.S., and multiple numbers of his inner circle have already had the disease. His administration said they should have the results back on Tuesday, so we'll see how they decide to play it from here. Quicker. Quickie. That's it for the Majority Report's AM Quickie today. Sam's out on vacation, but the Majority Report team will have more live-to-tape content lined up later this afternoon. 